And with us now is an expert from a state that matters. It's Nevada's John Ralston, CEO and editor at the Nevada Independent. And I say it matters because, as John Ralston says, we matter. And it seems that the presidential campaign is listening to you. Welcome to the show, John. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on. It's so interesting, especially since you're a guy who knows Nevada well. I mean, I think people who understand politics have seen you talk about this state for years now. And just tell us what we're seeing in this presidential campaign that seems a little different from the past. Well, I mean, of course, this whole uh, year is different, right, because of Biden getting out of the race and Harris suddenly being in the race. Before Biden got out in Nevada, uh, which has shifted a little bit right over the last two cycles, uh, Biden was behind outside the margin of error to Trump, and Democrats here were very depressed. But since uh, the, the, the switch, uh, the polls have turned around, uh, even though the New York Times seems to have forgotten that we're in the Sun Belt, too. Uh, the polling here is very similar. It's very, very close in all the private and public polling uh, that I've seen. And so Harris has turned what looked like a pretty bleak outlook here for the Democrats into a lot of optimism, a lot of volunteers. But the state is still very, very close. It feels like this whole race is very, very close when it comes down to it. And you're right, folks were looking for Nevada in the New York Times Siena poll because they said it was a Sun Belt. We didn't get any recent polling since the debate there. You have said it's close. Just give the lay of the land to the folks at home. When we talk about these 17 counties there in Nevada, 15 of them go Republican, two have gone Democrat in the last two elections, but so much of that population is in those other in those two counties, right? Yeah, there's two urban areas in Nevada, essentially, and one of them is is huge, and that's Clark County, which is where Las Vegas is, which is two-thirds of the vote. Then you have Washoe County, which is Reno, which is about 10 to 12 percent. And then the 15 counties you mentioned in between are all very red counties. So for a Republican to win a statewide race in Nevada, the math is pretty simple. You can't lose by too much in the populous area of Clark County, win by landslides in the rural counties, and hold your own in Washoe County. It's a very difficult needle to thread for both parties now, and you had a split last cycle when the U.S. Senate race was won by a Democrat in a very, very close race, 8,000 votes, but the governor's race was won by a Republican by about 15,000 votes, so less than 1% and 1.5%. Very, very close state. We're a purple state. Yeah, you say, and the voter registration also tells that story from what we understand. I mean, you tell me and update me, but from what I understand, it's basically pretty split with a third of the vote being no party preference or no partisan, as you call it there, Nevada, right? That's right. And, and the, the dynamic of the state has changed. The Democrats used to have a significant statewide lead. It's now under 1%. But the bigger story is what you alluded to, which is non-major party voters now are well over a third, actually, making up close to 40% of the vote. But that's a little bit misleading. There's an auto, automatic uh, voter registration uh, program now in state law. So if you go to the DMV to get your car registered or your driver's license renewed, you're automatically registered uh, as a nonpartisan voter or independent voter if you don't choose to be a Democrat or Republican. So this race is going to be decided by those non-major party voters and which ones are the real ones. That is, which candidate can find the independents who are really not so independent. Well, it, this race is going to be decided by the thinnest of margins, but it may be divided, decided by the economy around the country and certainly there in Nevada. And there's been national attention on this whole policy coming from former President Trump, but Kamala Harris also, as they say, trying to drink a little milkshake here, also going for this no tax on tips. Such a big idea there in such a service economy based economy, especially in Clark County, Las Vegas, as you say. Talk about how that issue is rattled around and whether the voters there care whether it's coming first from former President Trump or from Kamala Harris, because both Democratic senators have said the same thing, right? Yeah, you're exactly right on that. So Trump claims he got this idea for no taxes on tips from a waitress in Las Vegas. Uh, and so he has jumped on it. He has started a campaign for people to say no taxes on tips at restaurants and write it on receipts. Uh, Harris immediately jumped on board. And as you mentioned, Nevada has two Democratic senators. They jumped on board as well. But Trump is really using that as his signature issue here because, as you mentioned, 
mentioned, it's a service economy. And the biggest beneficiaries potentially would be members of the culinary union, which has a lot of the casino workers and is by far the biggest union. Now, the culinary union has endorsed uh, Harris and said Trump can't possibly get this done. And he's all talk and this is pandering, which all may be true. But if he can penetrate pass the leadership into the rank and file and divide them a little bit, that could, as I mentioned earlier, mm. cut down the Democratic margin in Clark County, and that's how he could win the state. Well, as you say, I mean, Trump's also looking to penetrate in some of his other key issues, and that includes border security, immigration, which is especially interesting because Nevada not technically a border state, yet this, as you have said, is a big issue in Nevada. Explain why. Yeah, you're exactly right. Obviously, we're not a border state, but we have one of the largest proportionally undocumented worker populations. And so uh, immigration has come up pretty high in polls. Now, listen, nothing compares to the economy in all of the polls that I've seen, but and especially the housing crisis here. But immigration does come up. And again, you are talking about certain pockets of voters that could make the difference. Joe Biden won the state by 33,000 votes. So you just turn, you know, 16,500 votes around and Biden wouldn't have won the state. What is going to do it? Is it going to be the no taxes on tips? Is it going to be immigration appealing to base Republican voters? Is it going to be a pro-choice abortion issue that's on the ballot that Democrats hope to drive turnout just enough so they can overcome some of the countervailing forces on the economy and on immigration? And I know both voter, both parties are looking at Latino voters who have outpaced uh, population growth of other demographics but don't necessarily register or vote at the same rate. So that's a demographic people are looking at. And a last moment there, John, let's just talk about the Senate race. As you mentioned, in 22, that race was divided by just eight, I mean, decided by just 8,000 votes or so. What are we seeing for this one? Well, Jackie Rosen, who is a, a first-termer, uh, has been consistently ahead in polls, ahead of Sam Brown, who is relatively new to the state, who is a disfigured, badly burned war veteran who has an amazing heroic story to tell, but who has doesn't have nearly the money and is not really caught on. But in a purple state, I don't think Jackie Rosen is overconfident. She's ahead in every poll that I've seen outside or close to the margin of error. So she's clearly the favorite. But it will depend on what happens in, in the last month and a half of this campaign. That's uh, so true. Well, you know, we used to call some polls the gold standard. We don't know anymore. But when it comes to Nevada, the gold standard is the person we're talking to tonight. Uh, thank you so much for being Sean Ralston. Really appreciate your time today. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we know a little bit more about Nevada now. Uh, thanks to Ralston Reports, where you can find there on Twitter, uh, and so much more of his activities there as well. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Let Spectrum News be your resource for balanced, in-depth political coverage, and click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV to learn more about the candidates, where they stand on the issues, and more. We'll see you then.